Hey, I'm Danielle from Rooted Studio, and today I have a shoulder sequence for you. You get to be serenaded outside by the birds, the goats, and the wind chime that's nearby. If you haven't heard goats in real life before, they like to yell a lot, so it will be interesting. You need two blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can get away without it, but this sequence is going to be so much better if you do have blocks handy. We're going to start laying down, and you'll set them up in a T stand. You don't want the blocks right against each other. You need a little bit of space. You might want to look at me first so you can see how we're heading into it. The block that's up tall will be underneath your head and then this other block, if you think about where your ribs come to a V, the edge of the block, the bottom edge, is going to be from this point on your back. So eventually when you're set up, again I recommend watching me first, you'll sit lengthen your spine and lay back. Now when you get here you might have to adjust the position of this low block and then you'll take the high block and set it so it's flat underneath your head. Sometimes when I see people do this their block is tipping so you want to make sure that that's resting flat and balanced. So let's set up and then I'll talk about what you can do with your arms and your legs once you're there. This pose is a great shoulder opener and a great chest opener. If you've been sitting a lot, this is going to help counteract all of that sitting. So set up your blocks in a T-stand. When you're ready, you'll sit somewhat close. Inhale and lift. Exhale and come back. Once you're settled, if it's more comfortable for you, you can leave your knees bent. But I recommend either straightening your legs out or bringing the soles of your feet together in Baddha Konasana. And then with your arms, what I really recommend, sometimes people like to put their hands on their belly, but to get maximum opening across the chest, turn your palms up, gently let your shoulders roll down to the ground and open a bit, creating more space between them, more openness across your chest, and take your arms out at 45 degree angle letting them relax. When I first started doing this pose, I found the blocks to be extremely uncomfortable and I had a hard time staying here. My back was always very tight. It still can be tight, but it's one of the things that improved the more I did this pose the more I settled into it, the more open I could get across my chest, the more relaxed I could get in this pose. So while you're here, feel the space across the collarbones, letting your shoulders drop down towards the ground. Notice if you're holding any tension around your shoulder blades, around your spine under the armpits, can you release that tension? Are you holding anything in your low back? See if you can breathe down into your belly. This will make your belly poof up and then sink down. If you find yourself at a computer a lot, this is something you could do really easy when you take breaks. Just set up your blocks, set up a timer, and lay on the floor. Continue to breathe into your belly space.
you take your shoulders down a little bit further away from your ears and down towards the ground. And then relax into that. Take one more breath here. Release and let go. We're going to slowly come out of this one step at a time. So first, if your knees are splayed like mine in Baddha Konasana, you're going to bring your knees together and sometimes it's helpful to use your hands, bringing your knees back up towards the ceiling. And then we'll walk our legs out long. Next, take your elbows a little further underneath you and prop up just enough, carefully and slowly, that you can move the blocks off to the side and come to lay on your back. When you are on your back, gently tuck your shoulders underneath you. Let your palms rest up towards the ceiling or the sky. Let your feet roll out to the side and breathe. Become really aware of your back and where that block was. Slowly bring your knees pointing up towards the sky. Lift your hips into a bridge. Walk your shoulders underneath you even further. Reach through your knees. Flatten your neck. Make sure your weight is even on the inside edge and the outside edge of your feet. And slowly lower down. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Maybe rock a bit side to side. And then you'll turn yourself over into tabletop. You can rock and roll all the way around if you'd like. And before we go anywhere, I want you to think about here in tabletop, when we push into down dog, imagine where that block was pushing into your back. As people age, they tend to round forwards. You've probably seen this in a lot of people, and I've noticed it in my own body, especially in down dog. So thinking about where that block was, we want to push that part of your body forwards, like the block was doing. And in down dog, I really want you to take your attention there to notice if you can feel that round and do your best to lengthen your back so we can kind of flatten that area out a bit. So in tabletop, spread your fingers nice and wide. Take your pointer fingers pointing forward and begin to push back into down dog, keeping your knees bent at first. And then lift your hips as high as you can. Come onto your toes and feel that spot in your back where the block was and draw it in. Take your chest closer to your thighs. Really reach through your fingers and then push the front of your thigh into the back of your thigh to take your heels closer to the ground, maintaining the length in your back. Keep pushing through your hands. Keep flattening that part of your back where the block was pushing. Long spine, reaching up your hips. Look up towards your hands, step forward. Inhale overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. We'll turn towards the long edge of the mat. So from the middle of your mat, coming into Tadasana first. Big toes together, rooting down through the feet. Palms facing forward, shoulders up, back and down, and then relax from there. Lengthen up the crown of your head, feel the space in your spine, and breathe. Step your feet nice and wide. 
Toes are still pointing forwards. From here, you're going to interlace your fingers behind your back. It's really hard. This ground is not sticky at all if I'm not on my mat. And without excessively protruding your stomach and ribs forwards, keep that drawn in. Take your knuckles down towards the ground. Maybe even dropping your head back a little bit. But keep the low ribs in. Just like when we had the blocks at the beginning, feel the openness across your chest. Shoulders away from the ears. Keep your palms reaching towards each other. And let go. Turn your right toes in, left toes out. Bend into your front leg, square your body towards the long edge of your mat. Arms extended, warrior two, look over your left middle finger. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. Nice big breaths down the front of your body. Come back to warrior two. Make sure your body is facing the long edge of your mat. Turn both toes to point forwards. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, release. And take your arms into cactus or goal post. So check to make sure that you're not projecting forwards at the low ribs. What I want you to feel here is space across the chest. Maybe take your elbows back a little bit more. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. Now can you maintain this openness across the chest and the shoulders drawn down as you stretch your arms back up? Don't take your shoulders up towards your ears. Keep that opening. Mm, it's kind of difficult. Opening across the chest. And then take your arms down to parallel. Palms facing down, right toes out, left toes in. Bend into your front knee. Warrior two on this side. Flip your front palm reverse. Notice how your shoulders kind of shift when you reverse. Come back to warrior two. And you have to take your shoulders back to the long edge of your mat here to come back into warrior two. Turn both toes pointing forwards. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, cactus. Keep the openness and the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, back up. Exhale, warrior two to the left. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, toes to center. Exhale here. Inhale, arms overhead. Remembering the openness across your chest and shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, arms back down, warrior two, other side. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, warrior two. Turn your body back to the front. Inhale, toes forwards. Exhale here. Feel the openness across your chest and shoulders away from ears as you inhale, arms up. One more time. Exhale, warrior two to the left. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, center. Exhale, shoulders away from ears. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down, warrior two to the right. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, back to center, a little bit different this time. Exhale, forward fold, lead with your chest the whole way down. Keep leading, 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 and then finally folding when you can't keep that openness anymore. Come up to a flat back. Really push back through your knees. Extend your arms forwards. Breathe. Option to clasp your hands behind your back. When you get there, put your other thumb on top and fold again, letting your arms hang overhead. Mm. 
lead with your arms, come up to stand. Step your feet together. Pause here in Tadasana, either hands reaching down or at your heart. Close your eyes. Become aware of your breath. And open up your eyes. Come to the back edge of your mat. We'll take a really big step forwards with your right leg. Turn your left toes at a 45 degree angle. Square your hips back up to the front of your mat. Sink into a square here. So really do your best to get as low as you can and square off your front leg. It's challenging. Take your hands on your hips and first just feel the openness across your chest, shoulders away from ears. Pinch your shoulder blades together. Become aware of that space. Now maintain that space across your chest. Take your arms down to your sides. Maintain that space as you take your arms up overhead. Biceps to ears, shoulders away from ears. So make sure here you're not just scrunching up. We're trying to keep the shoulder blades down, chest open, and that spot on your back where the block was pushing into. Can you prevent that from rounding out? Suck it in. Lengthen up towards the sky. Take your hands behind you, interlace, drop your knuckles to the floor. You will not touch probably, but it's the idea of reaching down. And come back up. Bring your hands down on either side of your foot. Turn your back foot so your toes are on the mat, your foot is straight. Left hand to the center, right hand sweeps up, drop your hips. Really get a good stretch through the hips here at the same time as the openness happens across your chest. If you can't reach here, you could always take a block underneath your bottom hand to help with this opening, allowing you to take your chest further. You can also place your hand on your hip if this bothers your arm. Take your hand down, step back into down dog, lengthen your back, Come forwards into plank. Bring down your knees. Untuck your toes. Lower all the way down to the ground. Elbows tight. Inhale up. Exhale, push back. Down, up. Walk your feet forwards. Rise up. Step to the back of your mat. Finding warrior one on the other side. Stepping forwards with the left leg this time. Right leg at a back angle. Hips square to the front of the mat. Come into a nice deep square in that front leg. Hands on hips first. Open across the chest. Maintaining the openness and the shoulders away from your ears. Hands down. And then rise them up. Squeeze your shoulder blades, drag them down a little bit further. Take your hands behind you, interlace them, other thumb on top. Take your knuckles down to the ground, maybe tip your head back. Create space across the collarbone. Come back, hands down on either side of your foot. Spin your back foot so it's facing straight. Find a twist on this side. Take your hand back down. Step back all the way into down dog. Take your right leg up to the ceiling. 
And then on your exhale, bring your knee to your nose. Extend. Exhale, knee to right elbow. Extend. Exhale, knee to opposite elbow. Extend. Right leg down, switch sides. Left extend. Exhale, knee to nose. Extend. Same elbow. Extend. Opposite elbow. Extend. Bring your foot down. Bring down your knees. And come back to sit on your heels. Sitting up nice and tall. If you can't sit on your heels, sit on a block. If you're sitting on your heels, come up and move your calf muscles off to the side. Sit back down. Sit up nice and straight. Closing your eyes. Shoulders away from your ears. Take your right hand behind you, coming into a gentle twist. Left hand on your right knee, inhale, sit tall. Exhale, twist. Very subtle twist. Doesn't have to be hard. Don't crunch into your back. Come back to center. Other way, left hand behind. Right hand on your left knee, inhale. Exhale, twist. center. You'll forward fold into embryo pose, keeping your arms behind you, letting your shoulders fall down towards the ground. Palms facing up. Now from embryo we'll come into rabbit. So you can gently grab your heels and you're going to roll lifting your hips up onto the top of your head, but don't put all the weight in the top of your head. It's just a gentle pressure there, and you're tucking your chin into your chest. If you're not sure, come up and watch me first. So I'm grabbing my heels, gently rolling. <laughs> my hood is in the way. Gently rolling, tucking my chin, coming onto the top of my head. Really reach back through your arms and find a stretch in your neck. You might have to play a little bit around in your body in order to find it, but see if by pressing the top of your head into the mat and reaching your arms back, you can find a good stretch. If you can't reach your heels, you can grab your legs, you can tuck your hands underneath. And slowly lower down. Resting again in embryo. And come up to seated. You'll need two blocks for our second to last pose. So this is a variation of bridge where the blocks are going to be on the medium height. They'll be at middle and end of your mat. The top block is going to be underneath your hips, your sacrum, and the block at the end is going to be underneath your ankles. This is called Setu, Ban Setu Banda. I almost said it like super Americanized. Setu Banda. <laughs> so this one, like I said, will go underneath your hips. And then when you extend your legs long, I can feel I have to push that one out a little bit further. The second block goes underneath your ankles. You'll walk your shoulders underneath you like we did for bridge. So you might have to play around and adjust. You can also do this with the wall at your feet and push your feet into the wall. 
But I don't know if you just saw what I did. I took my shoulders underneath me to create more openness across my chest, using the mask to kind of pull that skin down and around, palms facing up. Just relaxing into this position. Take your feet and activate them like you're pushing them into a wall. Knees are pushing down. Shoulders tucked under. Chin tucked to your chest. Make sure you're keeping your feet together here. Taking one more breath. You'll come off of your blocks carefully, so I'll take down your feet first, move that block out of the way so you can set your feet down, remove the second block. Just pause here for a moment. We'll use the block one more time for one more chest opener. Maybe letting your knees fall left to right. Keeping the block on the same height, we're now going to place that underneath the dorsal spine. That place where our spine, like I showed you at the beginning, tends to round forward. So this block, instead of going a long way like we had at the beginning, is going to face in line with the top edge of your mat might have to play with location a little bit, but I want you to keep your knees bent up towards the ceiling. So trying to find the right location. It's going to take some playing. So you can let your head hang if that's comfortable. Again, keeping your knees bent. Or you could bring a second block underneath your head or some blanket if you want them at the same level. This is just a variation of what we did at the beginning, basically. Arms out to the side, palms facing up, knees bent, soles of the feet on the ground. to stay here for Shavasana or as we did at the beginning to use your elbows as a prop to come up move your blocks out of the way and come all the way down onto your back or you can stay there if you want a little extra back pushing forwards a little more chest opening if you're coming into Shavasana extend your legs long let your feet gently raw to the sides Tuck your shoulders underneath you, palms facing up. And take a couple moments to breathe here in your space. to deepen your breath in both directions. And bend your knees, roll on to a side, coming into a fetal position. And then when you're ready, push up into a seated position.
if you are sitting cross-legged, change the cross of your legs so it's the opposite way of how you normally sit. Send your hips back a little bit. Hands by your sides. Inhale, lengthen your torso up out of your hips. Maintain that length as you take your hands down to your knees. Close your eyes if they're not already closed. Taking another inhale. And another exhale, feeling the openness across your chest. Inhale, arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Namaste. I hope your shoulders feel awesome. We'll see you later.